Is it possible to connect two PCS via USB-C? I'm trying to connect a single PC with limited storage, mini ITX, to a much bigger PC full tower that has a lot of hard drive storage. Both machines have USB-C on them, so I was just wondering if I can just get a USB-C to USB-C cable to connect them together to begin transferring files. Does USB-C act as both host slash client? I've seen USB 3 crossover cables so I'd be willing to go with that if it's easier, but I'm trying to get the best possible speed on the cheap. To connect one Type-C device, one PC, with another Type-C USB device, or another PC, and expect some connectivity, at least one of the Type-C link partners must support so-called DRD, dual role device. The DRD port advertises its dual role by continuously switching its CC, communication channel, pins from 5.1K pulldown, signifying a USB device, to 56K minus 22K minus 10K pullup, signifying USB host with different bus supply capability. It does this flip-flop several cycles per second. However, to be a DRD Type-C device, it must have two USB controllers inside, one of XI, host controller interface, and another of DCI, type, device controller interface. The I.O. of these two controllers must be multiplexed at the USB port pins. Currently only a few products, notably the Intel SoC aka Atom Cheery Trail family, and other mobile-oriented chips found in mobile phones, have this capability. If a PC is made of desktop line of processors, no DRD is available yet. If both PC are of the same kind, no connection and no harm will happen. If one Type-C PC has DRD functionality, it will pick the phase of its flip-flop advertising with the role that is opposite to the connected single role device. If the connecting device is host, the DRD device will lock as device and vice versa. If both devices are DRD, the roles will be selected at random and later should be switchable in software. Addition 2024 after seven years of progress in USB connectivity. With invention of USB 4 and its prototype Thunderbolt 3 quarters, a concept of side tunneling and other protocols was introduced, which provides an ability of having symmetrical endpoints, similar to Ethernet. As a result, modern personal computers with USB 4 slash TBT 3 slash TBT 4 support all have an ability of so-called peer-to-peer connection, which today is mandatory with full Microsoft support. This likely won't help the original poster, but if your PCs both have Thunderbolt, and you have a Thunderbolt cable, it is supported. TB3 and TB4 cables use USB-C connectors but are typically thicker and rarely longer than 50 centimeters. I just connected two laptops that are on different networks, and a new Ethernet connection appeared and I can browse shared folders and use remote desktop from one to the other without any manual configuration. One laptop is Windows 10, the other is Windows 11. I've been asking myself the same question and discovered a few things. First is that Apple laptops have had this feature called target disk mode for a very long time. This mode is in the computer firmware and allows many models of Apple computers to act like an external drive to another computer. This feature exists in Apple computers with USB-C ports. I've tested this with my own Apple laptop with USB-C ports by putting it into target disk mode and using it like a USB drive to another Apple laptop with a USB-A mail to USB-C mail cable. Apple does this in firmware but there is no reason I can see why this cannot also be done in the operating system, and done in a way to support more than looking like a storage device. A second thing I discovered is that the model of USB chip Apple puts in their laptops that are capable of this feat is widely used by other computer makers. There's evidence of this with the Hackintosh crowd using Apple drivers on their non-Apple computers running macOS and seeing the USB ports working. A third thing I discovered is that there is a project called USB Gadgets, which intends to allow a computer running open source operating systems to act like a USB device to another computer. There is an abundance of information on this for USB 2.0 but not so much for the USB 3.x chips seen in newer systems. A fourth thing I discovered is that USB-C ports used for charging or powering a laptop must enter into device mode for the charging to work. You can see this by plugging a device computer, one that takes power in from USB-C, 
into a host computer, one capable of providing power out from USB-C, and every USB-C port in a computer will provide some power. If one were to look at the connected USB devices on the host computer the device computer will be listed. The negotiation of which direction the power flows, and how much, is done over the data pins of the USB port. Unlike the previous systems that used resistors on the data pins for a very passive means of conveying this information this new protocol requires an actual data connection. Fifth is that in the USB 3.x spec is a provision for host-to-host -host communications by the super speed data pins. This means all four twisted pair data wires in the cable are available for host-to-host -host communications, and each is capable of 5 Gbps of data. That means a 20 Gbps connection is possible. So, if you have two computers with USB-C ports, and a USB-C cable, then the chances are that all the hardware is there to make a 20 Gbps connection between the two. All it takes is one computer to have the right software to support a network device on a USB-C port, and the other to have the right software to emulate a network device on a USB-C port. If that software exists then I haven't found it. If it does not exist then someone is likely writing it right now. I can confirm that works also on Ubuntu 22.04. I connected a Dell Latitude 7400 and a Lenovo T14 i7 Gen 4, both running Ubuntu 22.04, with a USB-C male-to-male, both supporting USB 3. An Ethernet connection is created automatically. So from there, the rules of any network apply. And the transfer speed depends on the method chosen. FTP is a clear winner in what I tested. FTP, nearly 1 GB less. RCP, RSYNC, command line, SFTP, I got transfer rates between 200 and 400 MB less. The same as the above too, but over Wi-Fi, using my smartphone as hotspot 12 to 20 MB less, so plugging it in was worth something, smiley face. SMB, Samba, which I understand has a history of being used for local printer networks in Windows, and the transfer rates are similar to what is shown by at ECUS, 50 MB less. Very brief setup info if that can help someone. I call the computer from which you trigger the transfers the client, and the other the server, or remote computer. In only tested transfers from remote to client, so you might say, download. On the remote you need to install the following packages. For FTP, sudo apt install vsftpd. For SSH related protocols, SFTP, RCP, RSYNC, sudo apt install sshd. For Samba, sudo apt install Samba. On the client computer the simplest is to just use the GUI files as greater than other locations. For Samba, the network should appear directly, though I can't remember if I had to set up anything else, anyway that's not the way to go. For the others, connect to server, either, this URL, the fastest, or sftp, forward slash forward slash 169.xxx.xxx.xxx, slower due to encryption, not needed on a local network obviously. Username and password and here you go. Note that as I plug and unplug cables, the connection from my older Dell sometimes disappears, not during the transfer, fortunately. This does not happen on the newer Lenovo. In case this happens, this can be solved by rebooting, suboptimal, or by following this advice to reset all USB 3.1 ports. If you want to support the channel, please consider subscribing.